everybody, this is the Drive to School podcast. I'm Paige, and this is Pastor Goodman. And today we're just talking about questions about forgiveness and forgiving. So one thing that you'll always hear, it's kind of like that good old Christian cliche, is the forgive and forget. But what if you have a situation where someone tells you, I've forgiven you, but I'm never going to forget what do you do? Ooh, so uh, nice low-hanging fruit there. Uh, here's the thing. This is actually all sort of rooted sort of in the scriptures because like we have a God who separates our sins as far as the East is from the West. He takes them so, so that we have no more sins. This is sort of the point of absolution is you are not a sinner. Now those sins belong to Jesus. He takes them. You cannot have them back. And so uh, it, it, your sins are blotted out, erased. This is language throughout the scriptures. And then we deal with the fact that um, Jesus, uh, he, he tells the disciples that uh, we are to, to forgive uh, not not seven times, but 77 times if your neighbor comes to you uh, in repentance. So over and over and over again, we are to, to forgive our, our, our neighbor. And then we ask what this looks like, because this is sort of the thing. There are, there are um, last time we, we talked about, sadly, uh, abusive marriages. Does this mean like go and resubmit yourself to abuse, not not to your marriage, not to to what God would give you good gifts for in there, but, but does that mean like line yourself up? Paige, if every single time I saw you, you poked me in the eye. Would I want to then just say, well, your sins are forgiven, so I'm going to stand very close to you? No, I wouldn't right. stand close to someone who would poke me in the eye either. Right. And so then we just sort of deal with the fact that this side of glory, um, God might be able to forget our sins, but we can't. And so there's there's something actually then that he would give us. Um, he gives us a crucifix for this. It, it, it's, a, it's a good gift of God. God can forgive and forget. Your sins are blotted out before your father in heaven. He does not look at you and remember the things of the past. He does not approach you as if you might just maybe mess this one up. And that's really good because if every single Sunday you go to church, say, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities. And God's like, I have heard this one before. Enough is enough. Woe to me for I am lost because I keep doing the same dumb stuff every week. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. But for my neighbor, like we also get to recognize there is a point in time where relationships just break because the sin. We cannot forgive and forget because there, are, there is damage done to sin so much so that sometimes like it's just a safety response. I need to not be close to you because you're going to poke me in the eye. And maybe you weren't going to this time, but you know what? It's happened so many times that I'm nervous. So he gives us a crucifix. A crucifix is, is the kind of cross with dead Jesus hanging on it. And, and I really like my dead Jesus crosses. They're, they're really helpful to me because I know that he's not on a cross anymore. I know that he's risen. That's good. We have a symbol for that. But in the same way, he's not a baby anymore and we still put him in the manger. Um, we, we actually need to know that he was there. He was a baby for me. He did become flesh. He did die for me. I need the cross because that's also ugly. To see Jesus there suffering is ugly. And I actually need to see my neighbor's sins being paid for there. Not just forgiven there, but, but paid for there. Jesus is bleeding for them there. And then I get to see where they belong. So we forgive and remember. I, I remember that Jesus died for my neighbor because that's where the forgiveness is going to come from. I can't forget any more than I can on my own just not be hurt by this any more than I can include completely on my own say there's no, there's no more effect to this. I can, though, say Jesus died for you, a sinner. And that means I'm going to appreciate you as one that Jesus died for, love you as one Jesus died for. But it also means that inside of this life, this side of glory, I might need some space too. Your sins are forgiven. I remember that Jesus forgives you. It's not that I want to hold that sin on you, but I need to remember that that sin was forgiven. And that becomes extra important for those sins that are so painful that as soon as I see you, I think about the trauma. I think about all of the years of it. I think about the thing that keeps happening over and over or the one thing that was just so awful that I can't look at you without seeing it. Jesus died for you is a very, very important statement there because if I'm up to my heart, it hurts. The, the best case scenario is that it, it's been enough time and distance where it doesn't hurt so bad anymore and it's kind of scabbed over or scarred, but it's still there. And so I need to forgive and remember. I remember the cross of Jesus for you. I, I might not want to be able to, I might not even be able to be in relation to you the same way that, that we were before the incident, before the sin, but Jesus died for you. And I need to remember that. Yeah. Cause um, with, the cross is salvation and with salvation is forgiveness. And we know all this, 
and we say it to each other all the time and then when we look at things again sin breaks stuff and you're like well can I ever trust that person again so how does how do you think the forgiveness and trust aspects kind of feed in to what we know and trust in what God has said that he does for us so trustworthiness is um a little bit to do with in the same way that we're, we're to make oaths to God. So the second commandment is helpful for this. So we're not to, to make oaths in the name of God, uh, because like, I, I can't like, I swear to God that I will see you next Tuesday. I'm not in control of that. I might think so, but you, you never know. And I don't want that to be my reputation, but when it comes to trust, like it also can't be based on never messing up because otherwise you don't trust anybody ever. My, my kids still trust me, even though they know me to be a sinner. They know me to be a fallible sinner. They know me to be wrong sometimes. But that trust isn't sort of rooted in me always doing the right thing all the time. It's rooted in a, a repentance. And so for repentance, we're going to use this, this word, uh, which means uh, it has two parts. There's two parts of repentance. There is contrition and hope. So there, there is sorrow over sin. I'm not happy that things were this way. I don't think it's good. But I, I was exposed to God's law. And so there is, although imperfectly, a sorrow over my sin. And also hope that there would be forgiveness. Um, sort of that, that idea of, can I trust you again after you're a sinner? I, I would sort of say, well, there's a real simple question to sort of sort through all this stuff. A and then you can get to the bottom of it. it it's, it's a fun game to play with somebody if you want to make them absolutely crazy. Uh, you look at the situation and you say, is this a good thing or a bad thing? It's very simple. But then I, I can go over. So um, say that uh, every time I saw you, you poked me in the eye. And I would say, Paige, is it a good thing or a bad thing that you keep poking me in the eye? And if you well, say it's a, a bad thing, <laughs> okay, so now we can have a different conversation because if you say it's a good thing, I think it's fun. Um, then I can say, all right, so no trust. But if you say it's a bad thing, I say, all right, so listen, I, I know that um, you, you got that eye poking uh, habit going on, but do you think it's something may maybe we can maybe we can work on? I, and from there, if there is sorrow, I can say, look, look at what you've done. It, it, it's 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 real. I know that Jesus died for you. And I know that you need to hear that Jesus died for you. Your sins are forgiven. I'm not just trying to leave you in guilt, but also there's enough damage here that we need to, we need to make sure that it, we're trying not to do it again, which is also why um, we do not, do not, do not tie the forgiveness of sins to you promising never to do it again. But at the same time, you are free in the gospel to try and break free from this, falling back into sin. Every single absolution I forgive you all your sins in the stead and by the command of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's not tied to you never messing up again, but we never want to just because, well, look at all the damage it did. If this good thing or bad thing game is, is played where you say, well, listen, here's the excuse as to why I poked you in the eye. All right, I understand that, but was it a good thing or a bad thing that you poked me in the eye? See, this is the game. You, you, you grant every excuse, you grant every justification, but you just ask, was it a good thing or a bad thing that it happened? And then you get down to, was this against the commandment or not? And if they say it, it was a good thing that it happened, there's, there can be no trust. And if it's a bad thing, we agree that it's a bad thing. Let's, let's look at some of those things that, that brought it about. Maybe we can work with this. Maybe we can kind of try and fat a path forward. There should definitely be the forgiveness in, cross, in the cross of Christ. But if it, if it is a bad thing, then we should, we should, well, try not to repeat it. Yeah, so that kind of begs the question of what if the person realizes that it's a bad thing, recognizes that it's a bad thing, but doesn't care that it's a bad thing? What if they don't want to change and they're like, I'm going to do it because that's what I want to do? Is it obviously it's a commandment issue, but like, how would you approach that type of, um, I guess, mindset? So if you're saying it's a bad thing, you sound like you're saying it's, it's a neutral thing. If it's a bad thing, it might not be bad for you, but if it's bad for me and you care about your neighbor, because you know, love your neighbor, then it's something to talk about. And if you don't want to talk about it, well, then that means that there can't be a, there can't be a building here. I, I need to forgive and remember that your sins are forgiven for by Jesus. I need to remember the cross, the, the crucifix. But if you clearly don't have this contrition, then we can talk a little bit more about the damage it's done. Like maybe you just didn't realize what it, what it was like, you know, I, I, uh, I leave the cabinets open because I got the ADHD. And for the life of me, I, I, I'm just looking for stuff. I'm lost all the time. And if I leave the top cabinet open, my wife walks around and smashes her face in it. Um, like, if I didn't realize what I had done, I, is it a good thing or a bad thing that the cabinet's open? It's not the end of the world. Just close the cabinet. And then 
she's bloody because this didn't actually happen. (laughs) But if I found out that like my, my carelessness hurt my wife who I love, that changes the whole perspective to me. It might just be that, you know, we don't realize the damage that's being done here, but if we can hear about it and still not care, you really don't think it's a bad thing. You, you're just giving lip service to it. And, and in the same way that, you know, you can give lip service to I, a poor, miserable sinner, but if you want nothing to do with forgiveness, then, well, I guess you don't, you, would, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't receive it. I'm not saying Jesus didn't die for you. I'm not saying that the pastor doesn't give it to you, but if you don't want it, then God. God's content to sort of say, if, if you don't want forgiveness for this, then you try it. This is, this is what he does. Yeah, that's a pretty serious thing. So like when we go and confess our sins and we know that we're forgiven, then that's all grace. But then if you go and you confess your sins, but you don't really mean it, wouldn't that be kind of a law issue as well? So, and this is that really dark area where you don't want to go because judge not is, is actually what this means. Like, this is the place where judge not applies, not all that other stuff that we talked about in a previous episode. Um, it's not yours to sort of measure your sorrow, but again, it's a, is it a good thing or a bad thing? And then am, are, am, am I sorry enough for my sins to be forgiven? Are you? Probably not. I don't want to start measuring that either, but Jesus died enough. That, that's where it has to be. If you want nothing to do with this, then let it be unto you as you believe, but if the forgiveness of sins is offered here, like that's the thing I'm going to lean on. And this is why I sort of, before God, you let him be the judge of whether or not somebody's sins are forgiven. That's not yours to do because you can't see their heart, whether or not they're sorry or not. But if they tell you, look, I don't care that you got hurt here and I'm going to just keep doing it. Even if it's a bad thing, I'm going to say, I need to remember that Jesus died for you because I'm going to have a real time, a real hard time forgetting about that. I'm going to have a real hard time from my heart forgiving. So I need to just say, Jesus died for you. And then give you the space that I need so I don't get hurt again, because that's, that's okay. That's really, that's actually really helpful, because I know a lot of people, like a lot of my friends, a lot of people that I come into contact with, have these type of questions, and sometimes they're kind of scared to ask their pastor about it, because like, well, what if I don't have enough faith to like believe that I've been forgiven and that's what you were talking about like measuring it that's a bad area dark area we don't want to go there so um thank you for talking about forgiveness and all of the stuff that goes into it always look to the cross absolutely there was uh just one more closing thought and then you you can you can take the podcast out just like you brought it in um there is a seminary professor who once said that adjectives are the enemy of the gospel so like i i a poor miserable sinner heartily confess unto you like with your whole heart confess well do you with your whole heart confess like i'm not saying the liturgy is wrong here or it's bad but like maybe instead of just looking at the word like how much do i mean it here are the promises because it's not based on your heart it's based on the cross you are forgiven because jesus died for you if you really don't want that forgiveness, you don't have to take it from him. You don't have to receive it. You can drop it off and cast it aside and, and squander it and get rid of it and run away from it. But Jesus died for you. And that's the thing the gospel is based off of and not how sorry you are. Well, thank you, Pastor Goodman, for asking or answering all the questions I asked. Happy to. Take care, man.